Yo, what is going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. So on today's episode, we're going to be kicking it off with this woman right here, guys, who is going to show us one of the many reasons why men are done with dating. We've got a lot of women out here asking, you know, why can't I be wife material? Why can't I be his girlfriend? So let's just jump right into the clip and answer some of those questions. Okay, this is number one why you don't lie to men. I'm at a guy's apartment right now, and I literally told him that I can cook. Like, I told him, like, I cook all the time, bitch. I don't know how to cook. So, we woke up this morning, and he was like, you're cooking me breakfast. Bro, I don't know how to cook breakfast. And he's at the store right now, um, buying ingredients. Also, if you recognize this kitchen, let me know. Okay, I just watch like flap YouTube tutorials on how to cook potatoes and then I call my friend and I asked her how do I cook potatoes. So I think I'm gonna cook like potatoes and then eggs and then like fruit. So I don't know, I'm gonna record him eating it. Let me drink some of last night's juice to calm my nerves. Damn. Guys, the thing that gets me, right, is that here we have a grown woman who does not know how to cook breakfast, okay? And rather than saying, look, I'm not great at cooking or I don't really know how to cook, she then proceeds to lie to the guy, right? You think after tasting this meal that this guy doesn't know that she can't really cook, okay? A lot of these girls out here, man, they think that they're being slick, right? They're like, oh, you know, I'm wife material. You can wife me up. I'd be a fantastic girlfriend. Really? Do you guys really think that someone who just lies for the sake of lying, even if you can or can't cook, the fact that you lie makes you a good wife or a good girlfriend it's so crazy to me man and who on earth this is a grown woman guys we got these strong independent ladies out here and they don't know how to cook potatoes okay and this is some like guys i'm not fantastic at cooking right but i know how to cook potatoes all right those and then the eggs and then like fruit so i don't know i'm gonna record him eating it let me drink some of last night's juice to calm my nerves Look, look at this guy. You can only see a bit of his face, right? But I guarantee you, this guy knows what the hell is going on, right? He's like, yeah, look, she had no idea. She whipped this up in the morning, okay? But what is going on, guys? It is Taylor the Fiend back again with another response video. And on today's show, guys, we are going to be going through some of these clown world dating TikToks. But before we jump in, guys, if you're new here, you're liking the videos, as always, make sure that you come and join us over on Locals in case Susan decides to delete the channel at any point, guys. And also, we're going to be jumping in with today's Patreon question, which is, why is there such a disconnect from reality for some of the people that you show on the episodes? And this was sent in by FM. And I think this goes along the lines, guys, that a lot of these girls, they have, you know, no idea what reality is, right? And when dudes won't date them, all of a sudden, it's like a giant issue that you could never see coming. So we're going to be jumping into that Patreon question as we continue with today's episode. But let's continue on to the next TikTok. that my best friend got with my boyfriend like two months ago and we're all pre-gaming together right now so I don't care I'm gonna confront her. So I talked to Sarah and she said that oh shit it's fine no it's fine I'm just talking to the the house because what? she literally left the I know you left the bar with Ethan two months ago. Wait, she literally what? just told me. Yep, she yep. What? No, I literally I just thought you know that I yes, Ethan. Yes you did. She there everyone saw you guys leave. Nobody everyone you saw you guys leave. leave. We literally wanted literally to my leave. boyfriend I almost don't know two what years I saw. now. I don't know what you I saw. You guys do know what you saw. I you don't have to you saw saw this to so many people. Obviously you did it. Guys, I tell you what, people will say, right, that girls like friend groups, they're more close knit and everything and they've got each other's backs. Guys, if you sit down and you ask women about their friendships and you say like, oh, you know, can women stab you in the back? Is this something that happens? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they'll sit down. They'll have a full discussion with you about how Becky down the road did this and this person did that and all this kind of crap, guys. Like, if you think the dudes are the only ones out here dogging their boys over girls and stuff like that. Guys, I tell you what, these girls, they'll literally be in a relationship with a man, right? And if the man's pretty attractive, you know, and it's not uncommon for the friends of the girl when they break up for the girls to go out and try and get with that man, right? And people want to pretend like men are the only ones out here doing crumb. And my thing has always been this, guys, is like, if you get cheated on, 
right? Why would you first, like, I don't know about you guys, but the person you'd be most frustrated with obviously would be your partner. You know what I mean, right? If you have a girlfriend and your girlfriend cheats on you, right? You have a problem with your girlfriend. I, it's just, you know, not, I wouldn't be going, confronting some random dude. You know what I mean? The fact, and also confronting people really doesn't solve anything, guys. Just cut him out of your life, truth be told. You know that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. She, there, everyone saw you guys leave. Nobody, everyone saw you guys leave. leave. We literally, we literally, my boyfriend, I almost don't know two what years I saw. now. I don't know what you I guys saw. do know what you saw. I you don't have you said said this to so many people. All and she says at the end there, right? You've done this to so many people. Does that mean that, unless I'm mishearing that, does that mean that the friend has also gotten with the boyfriends of other people in the friend group? Why on earth is she still there? You know what I mean? It's like, wh why on earth is this even, uh, man? I don't know what I saw. You guys saw. do know what you saw. You have done really this like to so many people. Obviously you did it. Part two of my crappy Bumble date last night. So at some point during my hour and a half long drive to meet him, he texts me. He asked me if I'm okay with seeing the Jackass movie. I sent him a voice message since I was driving saying, to be honest, I'm not really fond of the idea. Not really looking forward to seeing a movie on the first date. Um, I haven't seen any of the other Jackass movies. I don't know if I like it, but if you have your heart set on it, we can go see it. This is a bubble date where this woman has never even met this man, by the way. Okay, so she's going on an hour and a half drive to see a movie that she doesn't even like. She doesn't even know, right? She hasn't even seen the other ones. Yet she's driving out all this way and going to see this for a man that she's never met, right? And guys, this is the thing, okay? People say that, oh, how attractive you are as a man doesn't matter, really? You know what I mean? Really? We're going to play the game that only men care about how girls look, for example? Right? These girls aren't, you know, aren't out here being absolutely thirsty themselves. He replied with, I kind of did have my heart set on it, TBH. We can do something else first. Go grab dinner, drinks. So I said, okay. Since you have your heart set on it, that's fine. By the way, I'm about 15 minutes away. But I was not, in fact, 15 minutes away. Because I was 15 minutes away from the location that he sent me. Reminder, it was within a Marine Corps base. But the gate was 10 minutes away from that location and five minutes away from where I currently was. So I get there about 10 minutes earlier than expected. I text him, hey, I think I'm at the gate. I send him my location. And he responds with, oh shit, let me get dressed. It's 6 p.m. You're still not dressed? I told you I was leaving a little bit before five. It is a Sunday. Maybe he was in his PJs all day. I end up waiting 26 minutes on the side of the road in front of a security gate. There is a security officer that has been peeking in and out of the booth to see what are they doing. So you know, there are so many dudes out here that think like, oh, I'm just going to try and get this girl more interested in me right or i'm going to sit down i'm going to have long conversations with a girl on tinder on bumble and then maybe she'll eventually like me guys this woman has had minimal interaction she met this guy on bumble right doesn't even know him drove an hour and a half to a military base sat outside for what did she say 25 minutes to see a movie that she didn't even really like or have any interest in Right? And we got dudes out here like, oh, you know, should I continue this conversation? This girl's like, fl guys, if a girl likes you, I said this on another video recently, but nothing is difficult. They'll drive two hours in a damn hailstorm, okay? It's ridiculous. Well, he lets me know he's getting dressed and he's on his way. All right, cool. Wait, watching TikToks. Do my thing. Then he brings his car around. The first thing that popped into my head was, you have a car. And you didn't offer to meet closer? Why couldn't we have met halfway? But anyways, I just said I would follow him. And I expected him to pull a U-turn so that we could both go in the gate and he could escort me in. But he proceeds to go the other way. The way that I just came. So we go back down. So this woman drove an hour and a half to a military base to meet a man that she'd never met, and she assumed that they would be watching the movie inside the military base, by the way. 
You know what I mean? So she didn't even, she didn't have any expectations of, you know, anything romantic. Like, let's call this for what it is, guys. She was just going over there to have some fun, okay? And I love how girls are, like, so surprised when men don't offer to do things. You know, oh, he didn't offer to meet me halfway? Nah, you know, maybe, you know, maybe he didn't feel like it. You think girls ever offer to meet halfway men? You think, <laughs> you know... Like, from the outset, guys, if you're a man on a dating app and you try having conversations with, you know, a girl, chances are she's not going to meet you anywhere. She's not going to meet you halfway. She's not going to meet you a quarter of the way, even if she has a car. But you got to love how these girls have, like, such an indignant face when men don't offer to drive them, right? On the opposite way, and we drive for another 15 minutes, and we drive to Woodbridge Center, which is where the movie theater and the restaurants were. So you're telling me not only could we have met up at a better halfway point, but I could have saved myself an hour if you had just given me this address in the first place. It was at this point that I knew I had shaved for nothing. Okay. And look at that, right? And that's the reason that she was there, guys. You know what I mean? And like, hell, even if the guy wanted to have fun afterwards, it still would have happened, right? Like, it, it still absolutely would have. Um, but I just find it so funny how girls would be like, they'll lie to dudes and be like, oh, yeah, um, you know, I can't hang out today because my family's coming from XYZ, okay? Yet they'll drive an hour and a half to a military base for a man that they've never met before to see a movie that they don't like just to have some fun, okay? Crazy. Okay, so I am currently leaving the club, and I did not get hired at this one either. So, clearly, you have to be a kid <laughs> to work in the city of Tampa. Or maybe they just didn't want to hire you. I know that's like a crazy wild thought. Hell, I don't even know. How old is this woman, by the way, guys? Like, what do you reckon? Okay, she's auditioning for clubs, right? It's like... <laughs> It, just because they don't hire you doesn't mean that the people that they hire are like, you know, any worse than you. I, I find that really interesting, guys. Whatever. So we had this new girl come into the club, right? And she wanted to be a bartender. Okay. So she comes in the one day. My manager didn't even know that she had gotten there yet. And she like snuck up behind my manager and scared the shit out of her. And my manager turned around and was like, girl, like you don't walk up on people like that. That's how you get hit. Right? So this girl goes into the back and starts hysterically crying to all of us like, she's supposed to be the manager. She said she's gonna hit me. Oh my God, blah, 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 hysteric. Can you guys imagine, right? You go out there, you're working long and hard, right? The day ends, you come home to your wife, to your girlfriend, and then you hear stories like this. You're like, bro, like, I don't care. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I just, I just do not care, man. Hysterically crying. And one of the girls looks over at her with the straightest face and says, I think you'd do better at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yo, yo. So anyway, the manager hears her like freaking out, crying, whatever. She comes in the back. She's like, what's going on what's the problem and this girl says like you know you said you were gonna hit me blah 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 blah. like you're supposed to be the manager that's really unprofessional she was like i didn't say i was gonna hit you i said you don't walk up on people like that and scare them that's how you get hit <laughs> um but clearly this girl was just like way too sensitive for the environment um no you know guys i've heard stories about uh you know clubs the girls work out shall we say right where they you know, you would think that it would all be hunky-dory, okay? But a friend of a friend of mine actually owns uh, one of these clubs, right? And the most difficult part about his job seems to be dealing with the girls and, like, all this, like, little internal turmoil garbage that they have with each other, right? You would think that it would be with, like, the patrons maybe coming in and causing issues, but no, it's literally just the girls bickering with each other over stupid crap that doesn't matter, okay? And, like, this is... Again, guys, can you imagine, right? Referring back to today's Patreon question with people who are just so far out of touch with reality. It's like, can you guys like imagine for a moment 
you're you know you're a hard working dude you go out there you work your long job you've got a wife or a girlfriend and you come home and they they just give you crap like this and it's like bro it's it's so insane because the thing about this is is that a lot of women on social media have been fed the idea from men that they're important no matter what like any guy is just going to sit there and listen to her story and listen to her ramble on and nobody's going to pull her up on anything and truth be told guys that's why so many of these girls are so out of touch with reality because men will just give them attention for literally nothing right they're not rewarded for being intelligent they're not rewarded for contributing anything they're rewarded just for sitting there complaining about crap that doesn't matter and then they you know and then we ask we get guys who ask the question well you know why are they so out of touch with reality it's because they never have to step into reality ever like freaking out crying whatever she comes in the back she's like way Let's too continue. sensitive for the environment um no because you're stating facts why would i want my man following someone like me on instagram i'll do a show yiddies and booty and that's why they follow me because they're trying to say that why wait so we have a woman here right who shows things on instagram okay and then she says that she wouldn't want her boyfriend to follow people like her who show bits on the internet right M my question is always this it's like okay if you get a boyfriend you know, girls like this, it confuses me, man, because they think that they're going to end up with a boyfriend who respects himself, right? And who, who actually has values. But the thing is, a guy, right, who has self-respect, who has boundaries, is not going to want to date a girl that puts these photos of herself all over the internet, right? And they have such a hard time uh, hearing it. And which, by the way, guys, let's just get this out of the way, okay? This girl... You know, saying that she wouldn't be with a man who followed girls like her. Yes, she would. Yes, she would, guys. Like, it is, you know, it's one of those things where you hear women complain about their boyfriend, their ex-boyfriends saying like, oh, he was toxic. He was the A word, right? One of the things that's also thrown in there is, oh, he always followed other girls that weren't me. He'd always like other girls' photos, but he'd never like mine, right? It's because it gets the jealousy up and running, right? It gets the anxiety. But look at this. When he follows you, this girl, it's a red flag. Funny how that works. Booty, and that's why they follow me, because they're trying to say that. Why? I picked really shitty husbands. Just to make it clear, though, I've dated decent men. I just treated them like shit, so. Chris, if you ever see this video, um, I'm still sorry so i've been with my now boy i wonder what she did to chris by the way right maybe she dragged him through divorce courts took all of his money i don't particularly know maybe she took the kids as well um but she specifically i, I wouldn't even call that an apology guys because of the way she opened up this video it's really not an, a, an apology i don't think chris should ever come back but you know i'm curious what she did to uh chris um but yeah we're just going to completely overlook the fact i guess that she has encountered see this is the thing man that always gets me is like they have access to decent men men who will treat them well men who will you know say that she's the queen of the world she's a princess take her out on dates treat her treat her great all this kind of stuff but they never seem to choose those men right and if they do choose those men it's because they're trying to you know get something out of the relationship whether that be money someone to dominate um, maybe they're trying to get kids and then like or, or get the guy to raise kids that aren't even his for example right friend for two years and while healing in a relationship is not ideal because we have hit some bumps <laughs> because of me and sometimes him but mostly because of me but honestly my favorite part about him is that he loves everything about me and he loves how hard i work on myself and he guys i don't know what to say about this but like if you're with your partner and you love everything about them you, you have to be lying, man. Nobody likes everything about another. Like, you can find another person to be fantastic. Maybe you look up to them. You think they're great. But there's going to be something that ticks you off, right? There's going to be something that doesn't sit right with you. And that's perfectly okay, right? But here's, here's the thing, okay? Because by liking everything about a girl and being like, oh, she's so fantastic. I love everything about her. You're inherently delusional, right? Give it, give it six months and then see what you say. Give it eight months. Give it two years and then see what you say. Nobody likes everything about the other person, right? 
So that's always like a huge red flag, guys. And typically it's dudes who lack boundaries that stay, that say stuff like that, right? Like, oh, I love everything about her. She's so fantastic. That That's usually a sign that you're in for a very rough time if you're a guy that says that. He loves how I fight every day to be better for me and for my kids. We both go to- There it is. Right? What did I say, guys? I tell you what, I watch the, uh, you know, typically when I make these videos, I'll watch the first couple of TikToks. Maybe I won't. Like, m maybe sometimes I do, maybe sometimes I don't. But generally, I watch the first one, right? This is the TikTok right at the end of the video. And I kid you not, man, I haven't seen it, okay? And there it is, right? There's the kids. The kids bomb, of course, okay? That is why she needs the man. That's why, hey, Chris right? That is why she's apologizing. She's not remorseful, okay? She doesn't give a crap about you. She's not apologizing because she thinks that she actually did anything wrong. She's quote-unquote apologizing because she needs somebody to come along and help her take care of her kids. Not, not, not your kids, by the way, guys. You're going to be ranked like number 50 on the list of things, right? Maybe like 60, 70, 80. I don't know, okay? But you're well and truly... You're there to facilitate the growth of the kids and to help them and her with her life, right? You're not there because she actually cares about you. That's disgusting. But individual counseling, because we know that we each have our own individual problems that we bring to the table. Yeah, of course, right? So, you know, here's the thing, right? is like these girls, the first thing that they'll say to a man that disagrees with them, or, you know, is like, oh, you, you know, you have issues. You need to see therapy. I'm seeing a therapist, so obviously you should too. Guys, I tell you what, I swear to you, most of these girls are the cause of men needing to go to therapy in the first place, right? If you guys look at the, uh, you know, there are some certain statistics that I can't really mention here on YouTube, but you guys know those grim statistics where men choose to leave, okay? The age that men choose to leave, right, is typically the age when their entire life implodes around 31 when all of these divorces happen, guys. Right? It's really, it's not a coincidence, but nobody seems to want to talk about that. But guys, we're going to be, to be jumping into today's magazine article. So hopefully I have this one pulled up rather nicely, which of course I do not. And this is, uh, this is overcoming the bitterness that is middle-aged dating. Because a lot of these girls, guys, they get to this age and now they start apologizing to Chris, right? People like Chris, who they've done wrong or treated like crap, but never before that, never before that time. Now let's jump into this article, and this is written by a woman, so you guys can see this named Debbie Weiss, uh, and this is a five minute read, obviously guys, because uh, I find it funny how they'll put stuff here, like five minute read, as if these people are efficient with their time, like they're not writing blogs like this to begin with, but let's continue. Overcoming the bitterness that is middle-aged dating, or I never tried to convince a guy to clean out my roof gutters. Here we have the stock image. If I could describe middle-aged daters in one word, it would be bitter. And that bitterness is destroying our chances at finding love. Guys, I will say that a lot of people who, you know, do get older um, and who have been dating for quite some time, yeah, they get bitter. But the bitterness comes from different places, okay? The bitterness for men, for example, might come from a place of, I don't know, getting screwed over in the divorce courts, getting treated in general like crap, like a second-class citizen um, throughout all of dating, you know, stuff like that. Girls get bitter because they think that they're deserving of more. Y you see how one's justified and one's not? Right, whenever a dude is justified at dating, I mean, you know, um, bitter at dating, I don't think like, oh, who hurt you? You know, you, you suck it up, you, you eye sell, right? I don't think stuff like that at all. I typically think that the dude is probably justified, right? Probably justified. It's very difficult to argue with men who are done with dating because they have so many reasons to be done with it, you know? Let's continue. Let's start with the origins of our resentment. For many of us, it began with the very event, usually a D-word or a divorce, that caused us to be single in the first place. No. No, 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 no. See, that is not why, particularly the women, that is not why you're single. Now, there's going to be a small fraction of girls who are single as a result of those two things, but it is by no means um, anywhere close to a majority. Okay, let's continue there. We never expected to be in this situation at our age, and we're still uh, mourning it for our past lives, or at least our idealized versions of them, aka you couldn't get Chad to commit. 
As we set sail on the murky warding, waters of adult dating, we feel that fate has already failed us. We'd assumed our lives were settled, only to discover our partners weren't who they hoped they we hoped that they were, or perhaps they'd had the poor taste to leave prematurely. So even as we push off the dock, we are coming from a place of abandonment. Right? I hear girls talk a lot about you know, oh, dudes always abandon us, right? But guys, if you refer back to, and again, I'm going to pull this question up for one final time on the show, okay? This Patreon question right here, it really tells a lot, okay? Because these girls are so disconnected from reality. And the fact of the matter is that they have so many options available to them. And that's why reality is like this for them. Right, it's not it's not even close. Girls will complain all day about being abandoned as if they could choose men, as if they couldn't, excuse me, choose men who wouldn't abandon them at all. Right? It's like they they act as if, as if it's such like a difficult task and that the reason why they're single and alone over 30 years of age is because of everything but themselves. It's crazy to me. Our bitterness only deepens when we go online to find ourselves adrift in a hazardous uh, dating culture of disposable people. We go from being the one to becoming one of the innumerable seekers in an impersonal, sometimes hostile environment. We're subject to fake profiles, false representations, self-delusional photographs, and for women, allegedly playful bedroom fun innuendos, which come across... What on earth is this paragraph even, man? But let's address these things, okay? Uh, basically, she's tired of being lied to, right? She, she's tired of uh, dudes selling her a dream and she can't lock down the men that she wants, right? And again, I have no sympathy. I really don't. Sane people do not send unsolicited photographs of body parts. By the time we do meet a real, potentially sound individual, we're already leery. And each time one of our prospects disappoints us, we become that much more disheartened. Until eventually we see our dates as probable losers, siphoning off the remaining min minutes of our lives rather than joyful additions who might brighten them. We know it won't work anyway, so our efforts become virtually non-existent. It's as if uh, we're at war with our own desires. We might want a relationship in theory, but we're mired in pessimism. No, so you're mired headfirst into the wall, my friend. Right? You can be a pessimistic data when you're in your 20s as a woman. You're still going to meet a guy. Right? It's not the pessimism that really holds you back, even if, right? Even if you're a girl and you have a terrible attitude and you're in your 20s and, you know, you're not overweight, um, you can still find a guy. Now, will that guy respect himself? Probably not because you have a terrible attitude. But to say that you can't find men as a result of pessimism is an absolute joke, right? The thing is you waited too long, right? You waited too long and now you choose this moment to complain about the fact that you can't find a guy. Of course you can't find a guy. Right, in her own words, guys, like, you know, she's, uh, she's running out of time right here as I click the wrong damn button. In short, we are afraid to become invested. Unfortunately, our discouragement can render us unattractive. Back when I was dating, I was surprised at the number of guys who chose to spend our initial meetings going through a litany of terrible first dates and online agonies and failed relationships. And oh yeah, did I want to meet up again? Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> Oh, man. Apparently, they'd enlist me to reassure them that they were indeed normal in a world gone mad. Uh, but it didn't really seem like they actually wanted to get to know me. They were too busy dissecting their own histories as if wondering, what did I ever do to deserve this? Perhaps we keep our, our prospects at a distance because they have the power to reject us. We're afraid of putting ourselves on the line only to be told enough, you aren't enough. Or even worse, opening ourselves up to someone only to have them disappear on us. With no shared histories, there's no accountability. After a few desertions, we might become quite bitter indeed. Guys, I actually believe on what she says right here. Right? Look at this. We're afraid of putting ourselves on the line only to be told that it isn't enough. You aren't enough, right? And this is why girls often have the complaint like, oh, I just wish that I could be myself, right? I've never been able to open up and show who I truly am. And when I hear girls say stuff like this, it's because they're afraid of scaring away the commitment from the man that they want. Right? Girls know, I say this so many times, guys, but girls know that they have to repress the crazy, you know, 
oftentimes they have to put ridiculous amounts of effort into their appearance because if they a don't repress you know repress the craziness or b make themselves look pretty guys you know of a particular caliber aren't gonna want to deal with them right all it says to me guys when girls say that oh we're, st we're scared of putting ourselves on the line it's like you you push off commitment you don't try and secure a commitment up front you try and wait until afterwards to weasel it in once you try and get a guy attached to you it's disgusting but our business bitterness is caused uh to us by self-sabotage uh, we already know it won't work, so we don't even try. In preparation for failure, we offer so little of ourselves. We fail to examine our own roles and why our past relationships ended. We just want to avoid ever being in such a vulnerable place again. And we use our tr uh, intrans... I don't know what the hell to do that. Our loins might be open, but our emotions gu are guarded. Our expectations are virtually non-existent and our, our hearts calcified men. These are like the people, right? Who like, they go to English class. If you guys remember back in the day, right? And they're like the, you know, the girls in the corner of the class that just like sweat. You know what I mean? How you guys ever play like Call of Duty or whatever or video games and there's always that one bastard in the game who's absolutely sweating, trying hard. That's what these girls remind me of when they write, you know, magazine articles. It all comes across as anger. I'm reading a fascinating book called I Don't Want to Talk About It, overcoming the secret legacy of male depression, which says, warning, gross simplification, that in our society, women are raised to pull pain into themselves. We tend to blame ourselves when things go wrong. Guys, w women tend to blame themselves when things go wrong. Hmm. Interesting. Men are socialized to externalize distress, so they blame their pa their pain on having been unfairly treated. Yeah, guys, because we're just going to pretend once again, for example, that, you know, institutions such as marriage don't exist. Um, the fact that dating is not screwed uh, towards women, to be honest with you. Yeah, we're just going to pretend like those two overwhelming things do not exist. And uh, guys, any sort of, you know, grievance that you may have with dating, any sort of complaint that you may have obviously um you're just trying to externalize your pain and it's really not fair on the women guys who are just out here quite frankly in the words of this woman probably vibing let's continue they tend to be insensitive to their part in relational difficulties and not be as in touch with their own feelings and needs. But what basically Chad didn't tell her what she needed to do to keep him around. But while the capacity to externalize pain protects some men from feeling depressed, it does not stop them from being depressed. It just helps them to disconnect from their own experience. I think that externalization fueled some of the anger that I received in response to my earlier piece about my search for a grown up middle-aged man right yeah i need a mature guy to come and commit to me now right i i need i need a real man i don't just need a man no 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 see i need a real man disgusting I'm guessing some of the guys who commented were still upset over past relationships, possibly with the one that they thought would last forever, but ultimately disintegrated. Maybe in their prior lives, they planted the daffodils and took out the garbage and listened to innumerable stories of bad days, but despite their best efforts, it all fell apart, and maybe they never really understood why. So basically, this article, by the way, has just turned into trashing on men, saying that men have no capacity for introspection. That's what we've, uh, we've essentially turned into right here uh so now they uh they're never going to do that again and they're not too crazy about a woman who seeks a traditional gentleman and a clean patio mad power washing skills a plus so basically guys she needs a handyman she needs a traditional gentleman but of course if you ask her if she is a traditional woman well that's just uh straight up offensive guys we're going to be leaving today's episode there a bit of an all over the place one but guys make sure to leave your thoughts and your comments and as well guys don't forget to offer your perspectives on today's patreon question once again shout out to fm for submitting this one into the show as always guys make sure you take care of yourselves and i'll be seeing you guys guys in the next episode. Peace.
Yo, what is going on guys? Pass Taylor here. Just want to say thank you if you made it to the end of today's video. With that being said, make sure you go and show some love to the editor of today's video, guys. You can find free Apple Watch wallpapers over on his website, www.applewatchfaces.io. Make sure you head over there, guys, and bookmark the tab to show some support for your boy. He's gone through the blood, sweat, and tears of putting together today's video, guys. So make sure to go and show him some support for what he has endured today. Take it easy, guys, and uh, peace for real this time.